Welcome back to our module one. This is the beginning of our third lesson. And in this lesson, we are really going to be dealing with delta unbalanced loads. All right. So in this case, you might have either a star or a delta source, which is connected to an unbalanced delta load. And the first one that we are looking at is if you have a star delta connection. So you will see by the diagram that is in front of us that from your star supply, you will have your line currents that are flowing through to your delta connections. And those line currents are going from A, B, and C as I, A, I, B, and I, C. Then when they get to the delta connection, they split up. All right. So at the small a of your delta load, your IA will split up into IAB and ICA. Your IB will be IBC and IAB and your IC will be IBC and ICA. Then we are going to do the first example that is shown on the textbook so that we can be able to grasp how we go about doing the calculations. So in this example, we have a star delta system with the following of the load, all right? So they give you the values for your delta connected load, your ZAB, your ZBC, and your ZCA. From there, they tell you that you've got a given reference voltage and that reference voltage is van now i want to specify remember what we had said we had said that your voltage will always be a line to line unless otherwise stated so in this scenario you've got a van it means it's not a line to line voltage but it is a phase voltage so if there's any calculations here that means a line to line voltage you must go and convert your phase to a line to line all right the van is coming from your supply source which is your star connection so they say we must use a negative phase sequence negative phase sequence is your cba sequence and calculate the line currents draw a phasor diagram of your line as well as your phase currents so there's two things, we must calculate our line currents and we must draw a phasor diagram showing both our line and our phase currents in it. So the first thing that I draw in here is just so that I can remember when I'm drawing out my voltages, how they're supposed to look, by first putting in the phasor diagram of all my three phases in a negative phase sequence. So you can clearly see here that I've got, I have written it as a CB, which is the same as saying, CBA, okay? Where is my axis? There it is. There is my dot. And if I rotate this around, I can see that I go through the ACB reference, which means that it's a negative phase sequence. Then the second thing that I want us to remember is that in a negative phase sequence system, our line voltage will lag the corresponding phase voltage. So negative phase sequence, it means that my voltage is line must lag my phase voltages so where is this going we start by then simply drawing in my va my vb and my vc as per the negative phase sequence once i've drawn those three then i can start doing my first parallelogram in order for me to find my first line voltage now why did i draw it below va I've taken my VA as my reference and I'm drawing it below because I know that my line voltage must lag my corresponding phase voltage as it's a negative phase sequence, hence at the bottom. So I draw the parallelogram by bringing in the minus VB across. I put in my resultant, which I will know that it is VAB. Once I have done this, I can now draw the other two line voltages with Without having to draw a parallelogram per phase for them. And how do I do this? I simply go and put in two other voltages that must be at 120 degrees from where my VAB is at. So there it is, I've drawn the two voltages. How do I know that I've named the voltages correctly? You look at the naming conversion of your 
negative phase sequence. So if it was VAB first, which is an A on your ACB, then my second voltage must start with a C and my last voltage must go with a B. So if I rotate now my red voltages through that same dot, I can see that I'll go via a VAB first, followed by VCA, followed by VBC. Therefore, it follows the negative phase sequence conversion. Then I've now just put it nicely in there on the side so that you can clearly see without the reds and the blacks coming in together. And you can see that there is 30 degrees between my line and my phase voltages. Once you have done this, then you can go and write out exactly what my line voltages are going to be. So my VAB is going to be the square root of 3 multiplied by my VAN at the minus 30 degrees. Then we do the same for VBC, we just say square root of 3 times the 240 at 90 degrees. And my VCA is square root of 3 times the 240 at minus 150 degrees. We then go ahead so that we can be able to calculate our phase currents. So remember, this is a delta scenario. So our phase currents in this case are going to be my IAB, IBC, and ICA. I've just drawn just this part so that you can see. Remember, the line currents are what is coming into your small a, small b, and small c that are in bold on my triangle in my delta connection. So the first part I'm putting in there is to calculate my IAB. So I know from Ohm's law that VAB is going to be equal to my IAB multiplied by my ZAB. So therefore, making I the subject of the formula, I can then put in everything else that shows what it is going to be, remembering my VAB from the previous slide at the correct angle. If we don't have our angles correctly, all our sums are going to be incorrect at the end of the day. So therefore, I get what my current is going to be, which is 25.9 at that angle over there. I go now and I work out what my IBC is going to be. Again, I use Ohm law with VBC is equal to IBC times ZBC. I then, I make IBC the subject of my formula and I calculate what that value is, and I get the 21.3. I then go on and say my VCA, all right, which then I get my ICA as 15.802. I'm pausing so that you can be able to take your notes accordingly and see the picture as it is. So I want to emphasize again, the important thing was for us to establish with the reference voltage you were given, was it a line voltage or was it a phase voltage? If it was a line voltage, then I just had to work out all of my other two line voltages and their angles. If it was a phase voltage, I had to draw all my phase voltages and then my parallelogram of my first line voltage and then draw in my other two line voltages. Important, the naming sequence on what I have drawn is important. It must follow whatever positive or negative sequence I've been given in the question, okay? So that I get my angles to be correct. Now that I have all my phase currents, now the next step is for me to calculate what my line currents are. And remember my line currents are IA, IB, and IC. They're coming from my source going onto my delta load. So my IA is equal to IAB minus ICA, my IB is IBC minus IAB, and my IC is ICA minus IBC. I already have there all my phase voltages, so I just go and take them from the previous slide, and I do all of my subtraction to get what my line currents are going to be. Then I have to remember what was the question asking me to do at the end. It was saying I must draw in a phasor diagram all my line currents as well as my 
phase current. So that is at the bottom there. You honestly don't have to be up to real scale as long as I can see more or less your angles are where we are saying they should be according to your calculations. We're then going to do a second example where we are looking if the supply is now a delta supply and while my load is still also a delta load. So in this example, we are given that our delta delta system has got these loads that it is supplying and they give us all the values for ZAB, ZBC and ZCA. And they tell us that our reference voltage is VCA at minus 40 volts, okay, minus 440 volts. What does negative 440 volts mean? Negative 440 volts means that it's 440 at 180 degrees, okay? That's what the negative 440 means. So therefore, when I draw my phaser diagram for my voltages, I can already put in my VCA, showing it to be at minus or rather at 180 degrees. And then I can draw in my VAB and my VBC. I'm pausing for effect, okay, so that we can understand that it is a negative 440, so it's 180 degrees. Now they say this was a positive phase sequence, all right? So if I know that in my little um, dot, gray dot that I've put in there, my axis must go around as A, B, C for positive phase sequence. So already if I know where my C is, because my VCA I've put it there at 180, then I must draw at six at 120 degrees from each of those voltages. And how do I name them? Well, the bottom one must be a B by default because before C in a positive sequence, there is a B which then means that my top becomes my A voltage, VAB. Then I do my calculations, which you are seeing on the side, and that is to calculate what my IAB, my IBC, and my ICA are using Ohm's law. Once I have those, I go and I calculate my line current, which are IA, IB, and IC, same formula I had in the previous example, and I get those currents, all right? So in this one, they did not say that we must draw the phaser for the line and the phase currents. They just said we needed to calculate the line currents from what we have. Then now, as a practice, because we need to be sure that we've got the concept that we've been talking about in the today's lecture. So what I want you to do, I want you to go to your tutorial one, and then you need to try, and you need to actually do question one, only up to the part where they say determine the line currents. Don't do the power yet, okay? So you do all the steps that we've been showing on this video to get to your line currents. Then you go to question number three. In question number three also is saying calculate the phase currents and calculate the line currents. Don't do the 3.1.3 yet. So just do your phase and your line currents. Thank you very much for joining us as part of today's session. I hope today's session was explanatory for you and that you will be able to do tutorial one and three accordingly. See you on the next session.